I wanted to share a little bit about the scarf joints. Um, this is a real important piece of boat building, and I just wanted to share a little more detail. In case you're a new subscriber and didn't uh, see what I was doing last summer, this beam here is called the Kielsen, the Kiel Sun, um, <laughs> the son of the Kiel, I guess. And it is made out of a lamination of three quarter inch Douglas fir. And the lamination, of course, is different layers of material. And this thing is 54 feet long, because that's the length of the boat, from the bow all the way to the stern. And so, of course, you can't find a 54 foot uh, one bar, so you have to create uh, a scarf joint to create a 54 foot one bar. And this is a scarf joint. Do you see here? You have a piece of wood, another piece of wood, and you have to have a long joint so that when it goes under stress, it doesn't crack. So, um, I had varying different pieces from 12 to 14 feet that we scarfed together and then once I created the scarf right so here's a piece you see the epoxy and the layup um, so I made individual long pieces of wood then I glued them all together to make a composite beam so what we're doing here this keel plate has to be about 25 and a half feet long maybe 26 and this will be the absolute bottom of the boat. This will sit, <laughs> if I ever dry out, or if it's ever, well, when it's hauled out, this will be the absolute bottom of the boat, the bottom of the keel. And so, I'm using a beefy material, which is this one by Douglas fir. And so, since I need a 30 foot length, or nearly a 30 foot length that I have to cut down to size, I'm creating these long, joints that are called scarf joints and so um, you saw Ray cut them out earlier and so I'm doing now which is called finishing the joint and so what I do is take a flat object and I just run it over to look for any spaces and we're pretty good on this one. Actually, no, we're good now because I went through and I used a planer. You can see some of the teeth marks from the from planing here. Here. Use a planer to knock down the edges and then I use a belt sander to sand it down to get it pretty good. And on this one, not so much. It gets a little there's a little bit of light, if you can see that right there. Coming under there and uh, when you cut the boards they tend to bow a little bit and when I apply a little bit of pressure it gets a little bit better and that's about a 30 second and that's fine because when we clamp these up we're going to be applying pressure and using epoxy so they're pretty good so then once we get them um, finished should I say um, they go together like this you that in a second. So we get a joint like this. And I want you to see that. That's pretty good. Of course glue goes in there. And there, it's not pretty. But this is a very rough piece of material. Um, doesn't have to be pretty, just has to be functional. And of course you want to make things pretty. <laughs> but when you're using a circular saw and ripping like this, it's not gonna be pretty. Now, if I wanna if this wanted to if I wanted to make this a finished object, I do it would do exactly what I did. But then I would come and use a different saw blade to trim the edge to give a perfect edge to it and it will look good 
because if you can recall when I initially did this it was very rounded you know rounded and kind of unattractive but and this is just some weathering from the Sun I still got to sand that down but once this is sanded down it's gonna be uh, attractive as wood gets so you know something like this good finish look to it but again this since this has to be painted anyway uh, we're really not worried about what it looks like because this is the beefy bulky structure of the boat so I've done this one uh, this one down here was the actual first cut that Ray made and you see when you're trying to match up he did a circular saw cut from this way circular saw cut from this way and it didn't match up perfectly which is typically what you get when you do that kind of cut and this piece here kind of overlapped and I've since chopped all that away and gotten it pretty decent now typically I would take the um, planer and knock that down but uh, what I found out is if I did that I'm creating a void in here that's just going to occupy more or require more epoxy so what I'm going to do and this I've learned from the last year of doing scarf joints is when I do my epoxy joint I simply fill that area first I'll go through and I'll put some epoxy in to float that to basically create a level surface and then I'll glue the rest of it to um, you know for the bond but I don't want to you know take spend time and energy to take this away only to fill it back up with epoxy which is much more expensive than the wood and I know that that would be the case because let me show you I've already dry fit this once and it is just like the other one pretty good So, pick up the camera and show you that joint is marvelous I mean it's almost perfectly level going from board to board and that's what we want because we don't want to have to use a lot of epoxy so again we we'll already know we're going to need some there I don't want to make it worse by removing material but um that's what we do here. So, uh, we are going to finish. I got one last joint down there to check, make sure it's level, or relatively level, or fl relatively flat. Let me use the right word, relatively flat. And then we'll go ahead and glue them up. Um, I hate working with epoxy and trying to videotape because it's sticky, some sticky shit. <laughs> it doesn't come off very easily. And I don't want to mess up the camera. But, I want to see if I can recruit somebody to video while we do this. So, video number two, and I think we got a couple more coming today. It's a really great day here. Had a birthday this week. Uh, just turned 46 and uh, had a good week. Really, really good week. Um, yeah, so catch you later.